morning. It's so great to be together. Let's celebrate our Savior today. Do you see what I see?
says that you never fail. You are faithful to your word. Hallelujah. Your word does not return void. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Are y'all glad to be here this morning? I know I am. I hope that you are already feeling refreshed by the Holy Spirit that's in this place. There's a story in Mark 9 that the Lord has just been wearing me out about the last couple of days. And it's a story of a man who brings his son to Jesus. And his son has been possessed by an impure spirit and it has been trying to kill his son. And Jesus says, bring him to me. They brought the boy to him. When the demonic spirit saw him, immediately it threw the boy into a convulsion and falling to the ground, he began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. And I love this question that Jesus asks because it shows his love and his compassion and that he sees us. Because Jesus didn't have to ask this. Jesus is God. God is omniscient. That means he knows everything. He already knew the answer to this question, but he takes this opportunity to make a connection with this man. And he asks the man, how long has this been happening to him? And he answered, since childhood. The demon has often thrown him both into the fire and into water, intending to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. You see, up until this point, this man hasn't yet experienced a firsthand experience with Jesus. It was his secondhand faith that brought him to Jesus. And so he's like, if you can do anything, I've only heard about you, but if you can do something in this situation. And I love the opportunity that Jesus gives to him here. He says, you say to me, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes and trusts in me. You see, Jesus could have said, of course I can, watch this. But he gave the man an opportunity to have firsthand faith in him. It was the secondhand faith that brought him to Jesus. It was maybe, maybe for you, it's I heard about my friend who went to church and their marriage was restored. Or I heard about whenever my friend went through freedom and they were delivered from fear. It's the secondhand faith that maybe brought you to Jesus' feet, but now he wants to convert it to a firsthand experience where it's just you and him and you have that faith that he did it for you too. And he always gives us an opportunity to participate in our miracle and in our healing. We see it with the man who he put mud on his eyes and he said, go and wash. We see it with the man who he said, pick up your mat and walk. We see it with the man who he asked, what do you want me to do for you? So he's always giving us an opportunity to participate in our miracle. And that's what he gave this man here. He says, if you say to me, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes and trusts in me. And this man, he takes the opportunity. Immediately, the father of the boy cried out with a desperate, piercing cry. Some of us need to get desperate in this place this morning, saying, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And in this moment, our prayer team is going to come forward. And maybe that's you this morning. I do believe God can heal my marriage, but God, help me overcome the part of me that's human, the part of me that doesn't yet believe. I do believe that you can heal me of depression and anxiety, but help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe that you can heal autoimmune disease and cancer, but help me overcome my unbelief. And Jesus leaves room for us to be human. He's okay with your unbelief. He's not worried about it. He goes on to heal this little boy. He casts out the demon. And so what I want us to do in this moment is take that opportunity to reconfess that we believe 
in him and to put him back as the Lord of our lives. Whatever step you need to take in this moment, I hope that you take the opportunity like this man did and that you use the opportunity to confess your firsthand faith in Jesus. Whatever that may be, maybe you're gonna come to one of our prayer team members, or maybe you're just gonna step out in the aisle, or maybe you wanna just come around the front. Maybe you want to lift your hands and surrender and worship. Maybe you wanna kneel down. Whatever it is, take that step to place the Lord back as Lord and Savior of your life. Can we pray in this moment? God, thank you so much for this opportunity. Lord, thank you that you always give us an opportunity to participate in the miracle and in the healing that you wanna bring into our lives. God, thank you so much that you are in this place. God, that you are right now converting secondhand faith to a firsthand connection and a miracle. Lord, you are healing bodies in this place. You are taking steps to heal relationships. Lord, you are healing minds and mental illnesses and physical illnesses. You are healing financial issues. Lord, we thank you in this moment, God, and we place you back as Lord of our lives and we just completely surrender to you and we say we cannot do this on our own. We have been trying to do this on our own and no more. You are Lord and Savior, not ourselves, God. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Can we worship together this morning?
believe that in this place this morning? Is He your everything? Can we just give one more hand clap of praise to the creator of the universe? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Before you're seated, high five or elbow bump if that's what you wanna do. Three people before you're seated. You can find your seat. My name is Megan. I have the pleasure of serving here on the Dream Team. Can we just give it up like crazy for all of our first time guests? Give them a warm, vibrant welcome. Thank you so much for being here. If this is one of your first times here, we wanna connect with you and you can do that by filling out a connect card. Those are found in the seat back pocket in front of you. And we're gonna use this information to just learn more about you and your family, keep you updated on everything going on here at Vibrant. And we'll reach out and thank you for coming and just see how we can be praying for you this week. If you haven't yet gone through next, today is your opportunity. There's no time like the present. Seize the day. You can go through next step two today directly after service. All you have to do is go through those double doors to my right and your left, and we will be there to take you through next step two. You can leave your kiddos in childcare. We will continue to take care of them. We've got drinks and snacks. If you want more information about Next, you can denote that on your Connect card and you can give that to any one of our team members with the lanyard. You can also put that in the offering bucket as we pass those buckets here in a minute. Another opportunity to connect with us, look at your neighbor and say this Saturday, 9 a.m., pray first. Every first Saturday of the month, we have Pray First from 9 to 10 a.m. And I promise you, it is gonna be the best hour of your month. We've got word, we've got worship. I love that we get to hear from different people. They, different people bring devotions every, um, every month. And this is just an opportunity for us to come together and worship and just give the Lord our month. So just dedicate April to him. And I actually am leading the prayer force group this semester. Where Do I have any prayer force members in here? Yes. Prayer force is so much fun. Thank you, McKay's for being so loud. It sounded like we had like 15 people in our group. <laughs> it's so much fun. But this week, um, the lesson talked about how God partners with us through prayer. He can do all the things that he wants to do by himself, but he chooses to partner with humans through prayer. And so if that is something that you wanna do, maybe you wanna deepen your walk with the Lord, maybe you don't know how to pray. We can give you a free prayer guide that is really just gonna deepen your relationship with the Lord. So make, make sure that you make first Saturday prayer, pray first, um, and a, a opportunity that you do not want to miss this Saturday at 9 a.m. At this time, we're gonna give you an opportunity to worship through giving. Here at Vibrant, we love to give because we know that God can do so much more with our 90% or however much um, than we could do with a 100%. He just continually blows our minds. And whenever we are able to give into ministries like and our um, missionaries in Lithuania and just things here locally, it just blesses us to see um, how the Lord can give through Vibrant to bless His kingdom. And so there are a few ways you can give here at Vibrant. You can text to give 84321. You can give here in person. There's a giving envelope in the seat back pocket in front of you. And you can also give on the Church Center app. And then you can also drop your giving envelope in our brand new giving box that's on the wall back there by the back door. We finally have it since we have our new building and it's back. So um, let's pray over this gift. 
God, thank you so much for the opportunity to partner with you, Lord, in prayer and in giving. And I thank you, Lord, that you are just continually blowing our minds about how you are our provider. We thank you so much, Jesus, for blessing this gift, not only for our family and our house, but just to further your kingdom and further your gospel. That is what it's all about, Lord. We just wanna make you famous. And so I just ask, Lord, that you would touch this gift and that you would bring glory to yourself through this. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I want to welcome our world-famous Dream Team coaches, Ryan and Crystal Craiglo. Woo! Give it up like crazy! Good morning, good morning. Like Megan said, my name is Ryan. My wife Crystal and I have the incredible privilege of leading our Dream Teams here at Vibrant. Um, and this Sunday is quickly becoming one of my favorite Sundays of the month because the last Sunday of every month, we get to take a second and just recognize one of our Dream Team members. Um, it takes a ton of people, a ton of hours to put everything that you see around you on. So um, last month, Ashlyn won it for Vibrant Kids. And I put out a little challenge that if you have children at all, to sign up and serving kids one Sunday a month. Now, I'm happy to report that multiple people have taken me up on that offer. Yep, we can cheer for that. And Crystal was thrilled that nobody has come back asking me for a coffee because they hated it back there yet. So, uh, but if you want to jump in, that challenge is always, always on the table. So. Take me up on it any time. <laughs> so I get to uh, announce our dream teamer of the month. Anticipation is building. Um, so this person, he is phenomenal. He is a, a giver of his time and his energy and his resources. And I don't know about you, but um, one of the things that I am the most scared of is heights. And this man came up here when, after construction had happened and we had these new lights installed so that you can actually see when you're sitting in your seats trying to take notes. And this man was up on a scaffold for hours, hours, making sure that all of the lights were good to go. He's fixed the projector on a scaffold. Um, when he stepped into the position that he's in, he had no idea what he was doing and he has taught himself and he has learned a lot. And a lot of times we don't get to see the people that are behind the scenes so much, like people that are in our production area. Our production booth, everybody say, hey! All of these people make sure that our microphones are working so that you can hear your speaker and they make sure that the lyrics are on the screen so that you know the words that you're singing and they have they have such a huge impact on Sunday mornings. And one of their members in particular just accepted, actually he just accepted a coordinating position which is really cool. So he's gonna be helping with the lights and um, I, we just wanna honor this man. He also helps lead a life group for men um, um, he's incredible. He's always giving of his time. Everybody give it up for David Taminski. Thank you so much for everything that you give and everything that you pour out. You have the heart of a servant, and we really appreciate all the times that you've said yes and just how much of a strength you are to this church. We love you. Woo! Uh, you guys can turn your attention to the screen for this week's announcements. Good morning and welcome to Vibrant Church. My name is Carrie Bailey. We want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. For our first time visitors, we would love for you to fill out a connect card. This is our way to connect with you and learn a little bit more about you and how we can be praying for you. The connect cards are in front of your seat backs, right in front of you, and we would love for you to fill that out either in person or online at vibranthtx.com card. Whether this is your first visit or your 10th visit, we invite you to next. This is literally where you take your next steps with Christ. 
and get involved with Vibrant Church. This Sunday is part two, and this is where you will discover your gifts and how God has wired you to use your purposes for the kingdom. If you have not already downloaded the Church Center app, that is a must have for all things Vibrant. You can go on there and um, actually do your tithes on there, and you can sign up for Bible studies, life groups, you can sign up for events, you can check your kids in there. There are so many options on the Church Center app. Really everything that you need is on that app. So Easter is right around the corner, April 17th, and it is gonna be a fun-filled, jam-packed weekend. This is gonna be our first weekend to return to two services at 9.15 and 11 o'clock. Mark your calendars for this coming Saturday. This is first uh, Saturday prayer. If you wanna get your month started off on the right foot, join us, we'd love to have you. Invite some family and friends, maybe those that wouldn't normally come on a Sunday. They might be willing to come on a Saturday morning. So we would love to have you this coming Saturday at first. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so happy to have you. Enjoy the rest of the service and have a blessed day. Dear sponsor, I want to thank you for loving me and sponsoring me. You are a big part of my life. I know you are very far from me, but you are always close to my heart. I am happy that God has joined our paths. I no longer feel alone. Thank you for the picture you sent me. I like to look at your photograph and pray for you. I always love my time at One Child Matters Project. They give me tasty food clothes and they help me with my education so I can be successful in school. I have many friends there and there is always time to play. Today I got to do a learning activity that will be sent to you. It was so fun. I love God. I've learned that God loves me and has special purpose for my life. I hold on to that promise. After my walk home, I helped bring the goats into our yard before the sunset. I'm very good at milking them and it's a big help to my mother because my father passed away. I miss him. As today ends, I have hope for tomorrow because you have changed my world. I pray that God holds you and keeps you safe. Please write to me again soon. I love you. Anthony Vibrant Church, how are we doing Sunday morning? Y'all glad to be at church today? Love it. So glad that you are here. Uh, hey, let's give it up like crazy for all of our first time guests. If you're here in the house, glad you're here. All of our plan your visits. We're honored that you chose to be in the house today. My name is Michael. My wife, my wife Carmen and I, we have the tremendous honor and privilege of, of leading and serving this church as lead pastors, and we're so honored that you chose to be at church today. Today is a very unique day in that it is it's something that we do a couple times a year, and we look at where we're at as a church, and we look at next steps, so where we're going as a church, and a lot of times we make special announcements, and we kind of uh, tell you about some great things that are coming up, and, and, uh, and we call that Vision Sunday. It's truly about the spiritual direction of where our church is headed. And so today is, uh, we've got, man, Vision Sunday is, is a couple of my favorite Sundays of the year, but we're going to start this off in just very strong uh, because I've got one of my good friends here, Brandon Ramey here from One Child. Can y'all give it up for Brandon right now? <laughs> So Brandon serves with an organization called One Child, and, and 
Brandon, I've known about one child for a while, and I've told you, hey, we're going to have you at Vibrant, and, we, and it finally worked out. We were able to finish our building program. We're in here, and praise God for it, but we're glad to have you here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about one, one child and what it is you guys do? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you guys, Vibrant Church. Thank you, Pastor Michael, for having me here. It's great. Um, I'm actually a native Houstonian, so it's always good to be in my own city. Uh, partnering with churches like you guys doing great work. In fact, we were just at Torchy's a few weeks ago. Shout out for Torchy's. Uh, enjoying, enjoying some tacos. Pretty as, sure we have employees that go here. So, I mean, you're a great shout out right there. It's great. Well, I'm always good for a free taco employees if you're around. <laughs> uh, but it was great. I mean, we got to talk about, obviously, the church, what you guys are doing in the community. And so, One Child, we are, if, you, if you're not familiar with who we are, we're a child development ministry. What that means is that we work with kids in 14 countries all over the world. And, and we help with them in a lot of different ways. But how we work with them is we specifically work with them in, in through churches, local churches, churches like yours that are serving their community. And so what we do is we call these churches Hope Centers. And the reason we refer to them as Hope Centers is because we want the church to be a city on the hill. And we want Jesus to be the hero of every child's story. And so these churches facilitate programs for the kids from the communities, which are, by the way, in really difficult places. So our organization says to, to the communities, hey, where other organizations might not be willing to come, we raise our hand and say, hey, there's no place too difficult for us to go. We want to reach kids in the most difficult places around the world, and we'll make sure that we're making a difference in their lives. And so when they come to that Hope Center, they receive the benefit of what a program offers. And so what that looks like is medical care, nutrition, education. They're surrounded by people that we refer to as child champions. So a child champion is anybody who is championing that life of the child, believing in them, and helping them become all that they can become. And then most importantly, through that church, they get to, of course, hear about Christ and his purpose, his design for who they are, to bring dignity and value back into their identity so they don't realize or that they don't remember or they don't think about themselves as their situation or circumstance, but they think about themselves as a child of God and that he has created them on purpose for a purpose. And so we work through the local church. We partner churches like yours to that local church. And here's the thing about all those tangible benefits. Like all the beauty of an education, all the beauty of nutrition and medical care and people who believe and love on you, that should lead somewhere in the life of a child. And so we put words and language to that as hopes and dreams. Because if you're a child in despair, really, in your mind, there's this whisper constantly in the back of your mind and in your ear saying, this is all you're ever going to be. This is all your situation is ever going to be. You're never going to grow out of this. Look at your parents. Look at your grandparents. This is what they've been. And, and we kind of maybe here in the States have a little bit of a taste of that with COVID, right? When we thought, is, how long is this going to last? Is this my life now? Is this going to continue? And we all kind of got a, a degree of despair in that moment. Well, if you amplify that by a thousand, that's what it looks like to be a child in poverty, that this is my life. But when you get access to opportunity of things that you never thought you could have before, now you begin to believe that tomorrow and hope that tomorrow can look different. And you begin to dream about who you can become. And that's our hope for these kids, that they recognize and realize that they are created by God and that he has a plan for their life. And that all of these opportunities, these tangible benefits of a program can help them develop the opportunity to hope for tomorrow and a dream about who they can become. Man, I love that. Yeah. I love that. It's so powerful. You know, our church has been all about, from the beginning when we launched, it's been all about helping people make next steps, right? Uh, whether it's next steps to Jesus, next steps to purpose, next steps in discipleship. But part of that has been, we've been involved in missions from day one. We're involved with missionaries in Lithuania and Kenya, all over the place. What makes this relationship unique? Um, I, why don't you talk to me a little bit about that, how that dynamic works and what makes this different from any other missions opportunity that we've done thus far? Yeah, so for us, I mean, maybe you've been in a situation or you've been at a concert, you've been at an event, and, and there's somebody up there talking about a, a sponsorship opportunity. And so what makes this different is that it's connected to the heartbeat of Vibrant Church. So the kids that we have today, the kids that are out there, maybe when you walked in, you saw a profile stand and you saw a picture just like Gracie. The difference is going to be that all these kids are coming from the same community so that vibrant church can attach itself with long-term vision, coming alongside pastors just like yourself who have a hope for their own community, that you can come alongside them and support them and support kids that are all in the same area, which allows a church to develop short-term mission trips along with that long-term vision. So you guys can pray for those pastors. 
You can pray for that community and you can go see that community. You can go see the child that you say, hey, I'm going to support this child. I'm going to sponsor this child. I can actually go when Vibrant schedules a trip. You can raise your hand, jump on a plane, and it's no longer just a picture on a fridge, but it's a person that you can go see, hug, and actually experience the life that they're living for yourself. And so one of the big differences for us is that we don't ever want to come and just do something unless there's vision attached to it. Right. So we want to make sure that the church, that this isn't one child. We're not some third party organization coming in and just saying, hey, let's support some kids. We're saying, no, we want Vibrant Church to champion these kids in the community that Vibrant Church supports and and is coming alongside and is dreaming with. And so there's all kinds of projects and opportunity to be a part of. But it goes beyond just saying, hey, we're supporting this. And it seems like it's just a distant place we'll never see. Yeah. It's actually hands and feet. We can tangibly go and experience and come alongside. And so our whole mission is making sure that we support that local community as best we can. So we're not going to come tell them what to do. We're going to hear what they need for us and from us. And then we're just going to say, hey, we want to support you. That's why we pray. That's why we pray for the pastors. That's why we pray for these kids and their family, because we want God to lead them. And we just want to say we can help you in those leadings. We we can help you with those dreams you have on your heart. We can help you facilitate some of those things. And so uh, one of the unique opportunities for us is that when you sponsor a child today, it's connected to the vision and the heartbeat of your church. So it may say one child, but it's Vibrant's communities. It may say one child, but these are kids that Vibrant is coming alongside with that you get to raise your hand and say, I want to come alongside with what my church is doing. I love that. I love that. That's incredible. Well, you know, I will say this from the pastoral angle, my favorite part of this partnership is that, you know, a lot of times growing up in church, you know, missions, you would give it through your local church and, hey, we've got a missionary in, we're gonna give to that missionary, but we're gonna give it through the church. Here's what I love about this, is that although Vibrant Church, we're all in and we're sponsoring these kids, you're able to do this individually with one child, okay? So you don't give to Vibrant Church and Vibrant Church gives there, like you give directly to one child, okay? You give directly to them and we get to partner together to be able to do missions trips when we want to. Now, we have two different countries that we're going to be involved with. Uh, the Brandon and I's conversation was simply that we uh, we wanted to be where you guys needed us most because that we truly, that a servant's heart wanted to just be wherever you wanted us. We're all in. What are the next steps? How do we start, like how do we do this? How do we partner with you? How do we get involved? Yeah, that's a great question. So yeah, we are in two countries with Vibrant, uh, Nepal and Bangladesh. They're basically right next door to one another. And so what that looks like is, again, outside you've got these profiles like Gracie. Gracie is eight years old. It tells a little bit more about her on the front, like her birthday, where she's from. She's from Nepal. And then on the inside of every profile is going to be a short bio bio of that child's story, right? So Gracie lives with her parents. Her dad's a farmer. Uh, She is growing up right now wanting to be a nurse. Uh, She has a lot of fun, like it says here, just playing with her friends. She likes to help her mom around the house. So it gives you a little bit of a story of kind of what their circumstance looks like and kind of what their home situation is like. And then on the inside of that is going to be this perforated part. And this is really the part that you get to once you rate, once you kind of see a profile that kind of speaks to you, uh, whatever that looks like for you, you can fill this out. It's so it's all the basic information. Now there's two parts here. One is 39 and one is 45. So sponsorship is $39 a month. And that $39 goes to help towards everything that I already said, right? And medical care, nutrition, educational support, opportunity to come be a part of a community of people that champion and care for these kids to monitor and make sure that their hopes and dreams are developing in their life, which is one of the things that makes us distinct from other organizations is that we want to make sure that these things are actually being developed in the life of a child. So we listen to the child. We ask questions of the child. We, we go and do home visits with the child to make sure that all the things that we want for them are able to happen for them. And so that extra $6 on that 45 is basically if Gracie doesn't get sponsored today, we don't remove Gracie from the program. We don't say, hey, sorry, Gracie. We support Gracie till we can connect her to a sponsor. And so here's, here's the thing with all that. And I, and I like to say this, that, that's the cost of sponsorship. Right. That's the reality of what it costs to kind of put on a program in order for kids to come and be a part, to have those opportunities to experience things they've never experienced before. But the power of sponsorship, the power is everything about what I've already mentioned. It's you praying for Gracie when you pray for your own kids. When you're praying over your own mill as a single, you're praying over Gracie's mills. Right. And this is basically a glimpse of the gospel. 
that what God did for us, we can never do for him. Right. And, and what we're able to do for a child, they, they're never, look, grace is never going to repay us. And that's not the point. Because we want to allow God to weave our story into her story. Yep. And we want to allow him to weave her story into our story. And so what that looks like is we, we, we're praying for Gracie. We're dreaming with Gracie. We're writing letters to Gracie. We're raising our hand to go see Gracie and her family whenever the opportunities arise, right? And so we're making sure we incorporate her life into our life because I promise you she's doing that. So when you saw this video of Anthony, Anthony's not like a paid child actor. And those people in that photo weren't like paid actors that we just said, can we take a photo? They're, like those were his sponsors. And, and what often happens is if you go visit the places that we work in around the 14 countries around the world, kids will run a mile to their home to go find the letters that their sponsors wrote just to show people. That's so cool. they, have, they have books That's laminated awesome. of letters because it means the world to them that somebody would reach out and, and their families cry. When they get sponsored, parents cry. Mm -hmm. and, and these aren't like exaggerated stories. These are realities because it is an opportunity for families to say, you know what? My kid now has opportunity. I might yes. not have, but they do. And I'm going to make a way and pave a way. And so they're so thankful. And so we do that here, don't we? When people come into like vibrant church, I saw all the things that you guys are doing locally. That makes a difference in people's lives because you guys are prepared. And what we do internationally makes a difference in lives. And so there's a cost to sponsorship, but there's a power to that. And that is a relationship. That is weaving your story. And so I'll kind of end with this. Uh, everywhere we see Jesus in the scriptures, uh, he is always on the side of the widow, the orphan, and the child. There's never a moment in the life of Christ where he shoes children away, where he rebukes kids instead of his disciples. In fact, it's the, the reverse right? Because he's always on the side of the widow, the orphan, and the child. And so you can think that I'm just biased because I'm sitting up here, but, but I believe in this because I've seen it. And I just believe that I want to be on the side that Jesus is on the side of, yeah. right? That's I want to be on the side of Christ. Wherever Christ is, I want to be where he is. And so today, pray about it. Think about it. I happen to think I already know the heart of God, but you do what you need to do, right? Because this is for you and this is for the church. And really, ultimately, this is for kids in hard places that we get to come alongside with and just say, you know what, Lord? Use me. I want to be a part. That. Use me. Man, that's incredible. Isn't that awesome? So here are some tangible next steps. The first thing I want to say is as your pastor, I want to let you know and put my stamp of approval. I trust one child. I trust this organization so much so that I'm going to sponsor a child. Okay. Your wife has already grabbed a profile. There we go. Okay. So like we trust this organization so much so we're invested here. Okay. Um, we, I think, how many kids do we have out there to, to we brought, sponsor? We brought 50 just because we said, you know, we want to take, we, we brought all the kids we had from Nepal. So we basically we're saying, hey, we're going to support every kid remaining in Nepal right now. And then we brought uh, a number of kids from Bangladesh. Okay. Here's what I want to challenge you to do. Let's grab every child out there. I want to challenge you. Go grab a child. Go grab a sponsorship. Let's connect and let's, let's get involved here, okay? This is something that we believe in, an opportunity that as our church grows, we're gonna have more opportunities to invest in. This is kind of, uh, this is a perfect opportunity for you individually, especially those of you that are parents, you bring your kids into this, right? And so I wanna encourage you, make this a family thing. Don't let it be a financial transaction. Make it a family thing where you're praying for people, where you're writing letters, where you go all in. When, you know, obviously when finally, when COVID dies, we're gonna make trips. We're going to go. Let's get involved. Let's do it together. Let's go over in, in groups and let's love on people and let's share vibrant life in Jesus all around the world. Amen. Amen. Let's give it up for Brandon one more time. So glad that he was able to be here with one child. Amen. So that being said, you know, Vision Sunday, it's a tremendous opportunity that we have to be able to kind of reconnect you to where we're at as a church, give you kind of a status update. There's my beautiful wife, Carmen. Look, she can do everything. She's a production assistant. She can sing. She's good looking. Praise God for that. Amen. Amen. I love that. It's a, you know, it's a great opportunity for us to kind of reconnect you with the heart of Vibrant Church. Um, how many of y'all were at, at the women's conference this weekend? Y'all have a good time? Shout out to all the dads that had the kids this weekend. You survived. 
You made it. Amen. You made it. And now you can go play golf today, hopefully. Uh, and so, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, to kick things off uh, in, in this vision message, uh, you know, the first part of, of what we do as a church has always been giving. And that's why we wanted to start out our Vision Sunday with an opportunity for us to give into missions. And I want to encourage you, like right after church, I'll remind you about it, but you just go right out there and find a kid that you want to sponsor. Like, you got to race to get out there because somebody else might grab the one that you want. So like, go, fine. But uh, it, Vision Sunday is a wonderful opportunity for us to re-up on who we are. Um, what is our vision? If you know this, you can say it with me. Say, we are real people with a real passion to live vibrant life in Jesus. Say that again. Say, we are real people with a real passion to live vibrant life in Jesus. I truly want you to experience the abundant life that's talked about in John 10 and 10. Like I truly, that's the only reason I'm here. I, like I want you to experience that. And so our direction for this year has been a year of breakthrough, uh, not just corporately as a church, but personally for you and your life. And, and how many of y'all have experienced some personal breakthroughs this year? Come on, look at those hands coming up. Look, look, that's awesome. I mean, uh, we've seen that. We've seen it. I mean, I, Ryan and Megan, I don't know where y'all, but the, the Flow Tech, their business, incredible breakthrough that God just worked in their life. Uh, just incredible. Awesome. Uh, we've heard stories of, um, of marriages healed, uh, like put back together. They were on the verge of divorce and, and, and where the Lord just stepped in and changed their story, changed the destiny. And, and uh, it, we're seeing people that their lives are being changed through coming to Christ. In fact, just this year, in the first three months of this year, 21 people have given their lives to Christ in person and online. Come on, that's awesome. <clears throat> From the moment that we planted this church, it was important that we didn't just live in the now, but we looked forward. In fact, Charles Lindbergh said many years ago, he said, we actually live today in our dreams of yesterday. And living in the dreams, we dream again. We're living in a dream right now. We're in the middle of a dream. This church is a dream. Uh, but that, that is wonderful. But I take my inspiration today from Joseph, who had a dream. That's my inspiration today. Dreams and imagination propel us towards a greater tomorrow. They give us a hope in times of great uncertainty. Anybody know that today is uncertain, right? We live in a very uncertain time. The question I have for you today is, do you have a dream? Do you have a dream in your heart? If you don't, you need one. You need a dream of something God is doing in your world. Dreams give you hope. They display a powerful image of what life can be. In fact, Joseph was called uh, de derisively, uh, essentially, the dreamer, right? They, 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 it was essentially a diss, like you're the dreamer, right? Some of his dreams were, in fact, prophetic, and he saw himself as a leader of men. I want to kind of break this down and, and very quickly in a very short message, and then I want to share some great news that we've got with you. Genesis 37, verses 5 through 9. One night, Joseph had a dream. When he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. What that means is they hated him before. And now they hate him more, right? Okay, so listen to this dream, he said. We were out in a field tying up bundles of grain and suddenly my bundle stood up and your bundles were all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you'll be, your, be our king, do you? Right, do you think you'll reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way that he, that he talked about them. Soon Joseph had another dream, and again he told his brother. So he went to him twice. Okay, he didn't. He that little bit of hate wasn't enough. He had to come back. Right? Had another dream. Comes back to him. Listen, I had another dream. Can you imagine the reaction of the brothers? Got it. Right. Okay. The sun, the moon, the eleven stars. He thought there was eleven stars. Well, well, bowed low before me. Wow. Joseph was given this dream, and on the surface, it creates a lot of conflicting thoughts inside of us, right? It parallels well with the daily grind that you and I face, right? Joseph had this dream that God gave him that God was going to do something incredible through him, that he was going to be, he was going to be a leader. He was going to stand up, even be distinguished among people that know him the best. There are three, three things that I want to point out to you that I learned from Joseph in studying this week and preparing um, for, for Vision Sunday. Number one is that Joseph was all in on the dream because he knew its source. 
He knew the source of it. When Joseph was given this dream from God, essentially it was God calling him to something else, not Joseph calling him to something else. Now, the thing you've got to get there is when you hear that Joseph's telling his brothers the dream, there's a little side of us that wants to side with the brothers, right? There's a little side of us that goes, stop, you're being, you're doing too much. Stop, right? Okay. But that is only happening if we realize, if we think the dream is from Joseph, But once we realize the source of the dream is actually from God, we go, okay, I totally get it. It makes sense now, right? Emotions could have kicked in in his world. He could have uh, came to understand the the implication here. God gave him a vision to go further than where he was right then. But he wasn't in a position of leadership. I read this story in every version, uh, a translation that I could this week, and I can only imagine what he was thinking. What are my brothers going to say? Like, I want to share this, but I know they're going to be upset. Every translation leads, to me, leads me to believe that without hesitation, he told them about the dream. In fact, one scholar believes that he actually told them about the dream in the morning. How many of y'all morning people? Right? Not many. Okay. All right. This is what he told his brothers the first thing in the morning. Twice. Okay. All right. He was bold though. That's the point I want to make. He wakes up in the morning and he tells them about his bold dream. Why? Because he knew it was from God. He was bold about the dream because he knew it was about, it was from God. Let me encourage you today. You can be bold about the dream that God has given or the vision that God has given you for your life. Absolutely be bold about it because it's not from you. It's from God. It's from God. Now, at the park last week, we were, at a, we were doing an, a, an outreach at the park and we held signs up and we were holding signs that says, how can we pray for you this week? This guy walked, walked by me. He's like, hey man, I just want you to know I'm a believer. I, I don't really have to have you to pray for me, but that's bold. I want you to know that's super bold. Almost makes me uncomfortable. I was like, bro, I can't control your comfortability. My God's vision is for me to reach every person in this city with vibrant life in Jesus. And so the culture doesn't change the vision for my life. So it doesn't matter what Russia does. It doesn't matter what COVID does. It doesn't matter what the economy does. God's vision for my life is still strong and I'm still going after the vision boldly because I know the source. Some of you need to be bold about the vision again. You need a re-up. Let me just give you a re-up right now, a spiritual re-up of boldness. You need to be bold about what God has said for your life. Be bold about it. Don't be scared of it. For some of you, it might be a job change that God's been telling you you need to do. Don't hesitate. Be bold. God's got this. I should have worn my God's got this shirt today. I missed the opportunity. I missed the opportunity on that one. You got to be bold about it. Some of you, maybe God's calling you to stay at a job that it's difficult right now. God's calling you to stay at it even though it's hard. Stay at it. Maybe for some of you, it's starting a life group. Well, there's a new summer life group semester coming up. You can go through training next month. Come on, somebody. You can get that started. Get involved. If God is calling you to something, he will bring you through it. Amen? Amen. A great life group example. Where's Ashlyn? Is Ashlyn, Ashlyn serving in kids today? Where's Rhonda? Rhonda's in here somewhere. Ashlyn and Rhonda, they lead a group together. Rhonda's right here. Come on. They lead a a group together. That's good. But both of them have been through incredible pain in their life. And even recently, have been through incredible pain and grief. So they felt like the Lord together was calling them to lead a group called Sorrow to Joy where they go through grief and, the, and, and because they stepped out and they were bold about that dream, healing is happening inside of their group. We're seeing people come back and say, I, I've never been so spiritually alive. I, I felt like I'm coming out of the fog of depression. I feel like I'm finally healing after years of depression. All because somebody was bold about a dream that might make somebody uncomfortable. That's powerful. Be bold about it. Number two, I got to move quickly. God's vision for your life will include discomfort. It will. The road from the dream that Joseph had to the fulfillment of it was full of detours, but necessary detours. For Joseph, he ended up being sold to slavery. He was in a prison and then he was in a palace and then he was in a prison again. And uh, this is like definitely what not what he thought it was going to be when he got the dream, right? Like, God, this is not... This is not exactly what I signed up for, right? I felt that. Like when I read that this week, I felt that. For me, 
As a church planner, like when the freeze happened last year, I was on top of this roof and we were breaking inch and a half thick ice off the roof so it wouldn't melt and leak into our worship center. Not what I signed up for, church. I just gotta be honest with you. I, I did not what I signed up for, right? Okay, what about last week? We had our baptisms. Y'all saw our Sunday baptisms. That was awesome, wasn't it great? I love baptisms. But what y'all didn't see is on Saturday, I was literally canvassing the entire city of Houston to find a new hot tub because ours had a hole in it and it was full of water in the worship center. And I was praying, God, don't let it leak. Please don't let it leak. Y'all didn't see that part, right? It will, God's vision for your life will include discomfort, but the vision makes it all worth it. It makes it all worth it. Let me say, God's vision for your life won't make everybody else around you happy. You are going to have to choose, are you going to follow God's vision or somebody else's happiness? If you want to make people happy, go sell tacos. All right? Don't worry about God's vision. But, but if you want God's vision for your life, you got to be okay with some people being uncomfortable. I had somebody message me last night. How do you deal with people dissing you on TikTok? I saw our TikTok ads and people are like dissing you I, because I just don't care. It's not their vision. It's God's. I just don't care. This can, I, I want to encourage you today. Some of you, maybe you don't have a dream right now and, and you're, you're going through life like you're stuck with no direction, right? And, and, let me just encourage you. A rut is just a grave with the ends knocked out, okay? So if you're in a rut right now, you need to do whatever you can to get out of that thing. Some of you, you're in this rut, and maybe you've been in this for years, and you're just been kind of getting by, and you're like, man, what do I just got to get by? You've been getting by, and you're going to get by to the end of your life. Or maybe you need a fresh vision of what God wants to do in your next season. And some of you, even God has given you that vision, but you'd rather stay in your rut because it's comfortable rather than getting out of your rut and being willing to climb out and step out. Too many times we stay in the rut of comfortability when our victory is just on the other side. We just gotta be willing to get out of it. Your, God's vision for your life will include being, un, being un, uncomfortable. For some of you, this rut that you've been in, it might... It, this can often happen after you accomplish a big goal or another big vision, right? Something big just happened in your life. You got that promotion and you're like, all right, I got it. I'm good. Well, then six months, eight months, a year later, now you're lost. Well, you made it to retirement. Now what? The management position, the kids are out of the house, but then there's this discomfort of, well, what do I do now? What is it, right? Right? You've got to lean into the Lord for what is next because I promise you that if you'll let him speak, he'll tell you what's next. The third point I want to make today and final point is this. Living God's vision for your life is better than your vision. Better than your vision for your life. I knew personally that God was going to use gifts and talents that he had given me for something special. But when I approached graduation in high school, I thought it was going to happen primarily through music. In fact, I had a full ride scholarship to LSU for music. And I thought, man, I'm going to march in Death Valley. That's going to be awesome, right? In fact, um, I was going to graduate and be a band director and teach marching band until they pushed me around in a wheelchair. Come on. Like, I thought that was what I was going to do. Well, long story short... Plot twist, spoiler alert, I didn't go that way. Um, that was my vision for my life. That was my vision, right? And let's be honest, it sounded pretty good. In fact, if I would have went to LSU, I would have been on the field marching for two national championships. That would have been pretty cool, right? That been, not many people could say that, right? But the Lord had a different vision. The Lord had a different vision. I had a, realize, a realization many years ago as I was standing in front of literally thousands of people, nervous as I was, like, I felt like I was not gonna get it right say the right thing, do the right thing. And I, I, I had this realization that I'm not here for them. I'm here for God's vision. If I'm here for them, it doesn't matter. But if I'm here for God's vision, I'm doing it for the Lord and they just get to be here for it. And that means, for, the, for that, that means God's vision in my life, it makes it so much more fulfilling every day when I get up because I'm not here pleasing man, myself or anybody else. I'm here to please the Lord. Everything that we do a part of his vision is here to, to be pleasing to the Lord. Joseph knew that this vision was gonna come to pass, but he didn't know how. 
How was this vision going to come to pass? While Joseph was, uh, what he didn't know while he was in prison was that God, how God was going to bring it to pass, right? He's got to go from being a spoiled 17-year-old to a man who has both the wisdom and the compassion to lead. Well, then in chapter 45 of this story, we see the completion. I'm kind of giving you the cliff notes in a, a mini sermon here. Now, the brother sold that sold him into slavery and lied to his father about him being killed, literally stood before him in the middle of a plague and famine that had killed thousands of people, but they didn't know it was him. This is Genesis chapter 45. So Joseph could stand it no longer. There were many people in the room and he said to his attendants, out, all of you, gets everybody outside, except for him and the family. So he was alone with his brothers when he told them who he was. Then he broke down and he wept. He wept so loudly that the Egyptians could hear him outside the room. The word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brother. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing in front of them. They were stunned to see the vision had come to pass. They were stunned to see that that vision that they doubted, that they tried to circumvent, had come to pass. He cried out loud because honestly, my version of this, I truly believe that it was right then that it hit him. If he had not recognized this dream, none of this was possible. But this is way better than he thought it was going to be. It was way better than he thought it was going to be because literally he was able to help rescue his brothers from the plague. His vision wasn't just about him. It was about saving his family. It was way better than he thought it was going to be because it wasn't just self-magnification. It was bringing others along to see next steps happen. So, let me encourage you. Two years ago, two and a half years ago, we planted Vibrant Church. We're two and a half years in. We've got two building projects two years in, in the middle of a pandemic. That's something to celebrate. Come on. That's something to celebrate. When we planted this church, I was, as I was kind of reviewing in my mind that like what is happening around us is way better than I even imagined. God's vision is way better than mine. That's why I don't try to lean into my own understanding. If we start to lean into our own understand, we, understanding, we get what our understanding can give us. But if we'll lean in to the vision that God has for us, it'll be better than anything you thought could be, right? The whole purpose of us Planting this church is to help people take next steps to experience vibrant life in Jesus. Everything that we do leads to that, whether it's worshiping on Sundays, practical preaching, life groups, discipleship. But we're going to take this to the next level in this next season. I've got a dream that God has given us that's about to come to life. I am a, by nature, I'm a developer as a person. I love bringing people with me and let's get in the weeds and solve a problem together. Okay. For me, I love it. In fact, when I was a junior high pastor, I took over a junior high ministry that had about 12 kids in it. And I was like, I had a big dream for it. What if we had over a hundred junior hires and we built an entire junior high ministry inside of that? That's exactly what we did. Obviously I'm musically talented. So I, I built a band. I found, I gave them free lessons. I, I built a band, an entire band from the scratch, like an entire junior high, like 12 to 14 year olds, like through puberty, they were singing. It was awesome. Like I, <laughs> it was great. But like we built a whole band at junior high band. We built tech team greeters, a whole thing. We started an after school program with buses. We started busing in junior hires. And guess what? We had over a hundred junior hires in that thing. Why? Because we were all about developing people. It wasn't about me. It wasn't about me. It was about developing these students. And many of them are in full-time ministry right now. That makes me feel really old. <laughs> What if we could take the culture that's been created here at Vibrant Church? If there's anything that I'm proud of at this church, it's not me. It's not anything to do with a building. It's our culture. I love our culture of this church. I love it. I love the leadership culture. I love, I, if, what if we could take the culture of this church and duplicate it and build leaders and develop leaders from all generations? Guess what? We can. We can. Our team has been hard at work on something at the, on the back end and uh, we're excited to announce something that, that is going to change the game for our church. This has been something that Ryan and, and myself and Carmen have been quietly working on and a few of our executive team members, uh, our, our forward team members have been working on the back end and, and this is going to change the leadership development game for our church. This is, we're going to be able to develop leaders that are going to influence the kingdom. Are y'all ready to hear about it? 
All right, this side's ready. Y'all ready to hear about it too? That being said, I brought the best looking drummer in the entire world, Brady Sticker, up here. And Brady's gonna help me out by giving me a little drum roll because we gotta, for an announcement, we gotta have a drum roll, okay? Brady, won't you give me a little drum roll right here? Come on, come on. Announcing at Vibrant Church, starting in fall of 2022, we are unveiling Vibrant College. Come on now, Vibrant College. Now, I already know what you're thinking. How can a church that's two years in thinking like, I need more details. How can you launch a ministry college? How can you launch a college and be good at it two years in? Let me explain. We're partnering with Destiny Leadership Institute and Southeastern University where we're running a two-year part-time ministry leadership education program. You're going to learn biblical concepts, leadership principles, and get practical experience of interning in the house of Vibrant Church. What are you going to walk away with if you do Vibrant College? You've solidified your character. You know who you are. You're made, you've made your calling clear. You've increased your capacity, but you're also able to increase your impact within your local community of faith. So that sounds great, but here's always been my concern with Bible College. I went to Bible College. It was still my concern. What about accreditation? I never wanted to start anything if we couldn't be accredited. Well, guess what? When you graduate from Vibrant College, a two-year part-time education leadership course, you're going to be able to transfer a minimum of 18 credit hours to SEU where you can complete your bachelor's degree. So we're able to offer an accredited education right here in this house. Come on. That's all while doing a part-time Schedule, a part-time school load. How will this fit into your schedule? What does this look like? Vibrant College will be a Tuesday and Wednesday program. Tuesday will be all about studies and classes. That will happen right here at the church. Wednesdays will be all about practical nuts and bolts of ministry. The how. You want to learn how to lead worship? Great. If you want to uh, you want to learn how to preach, that's great. Sit in our sermon prep classes. That's wonderful. If you want to learn how to do kids ministry, you get to be a part of the back end of building a kids ministry. You get to do that. And on top of that, you still have Mondays and Thursdays and Fridays to do. You could go to another college. You could go get a job. You could go do chores at your mama's house. Come on, somebody. And you can do whatever you need to do. So here's the kicker. What does it cost? Typically, a full-time Bible college with similar credit hours for you to transfer out to another college, that typically costs about $14,000 a year. We're able to offer Vibrant College right here in this house for just a fraction of that. Only $3,000 for the entire year. Let me give you an example. For $6,000 for two years, you're able to transfer 18 credit hours to SEU. You can't even get 18 credit hours at Lone Star for $6,000. Church, we can't do no better than that. You know what I'm saying? That's about the best we can do, right? You get to be developed by leaders all over the nation. We have some of the highest quality leaders, doctorates, masters, just high quality leaders that are developing people and you get to develop your ministry locally right here at Vibrant Church. And here's the thing. If you see vocational ministry in your future, we may have opportunities as we grow to hire you right here at Vibrant Church. But if we don't, There are tons of churches in our Destiny Network that are looking for leaders to come from this culture and they would hire you on the spot. I have pastors calling me all the time. Do you have somebody that would be a youth pastor? I need a youth pastor. Do you have a worship leader? Do you have, I I would love to train leaders up and send them out and kingdom influencers all around the nation. So the question is, who is this for? Who is this for? We intentionally wanted to create this with all generations in mind. You can be 18, about to graduate, and you feel like God's calling you to into ministry. Great. Do vibrant college. You could be 45, and you just want to be developed in what, to, what God is calling you into next. That's great. Do vibrant college. 
We believe that this is going to, we're going to have a hand in developing next level leaders that are going to impact generations. We don't have to send high caliber leaders to another city to be developed anywhere else. We can give them a quality accredited education where they can be developed in our culture and impact the kingdom right here in this house. Can we celebrate that? Stand with me, stand with me, stand with me. I'm closing, this is it. I wanna encourage you right now. Some of you, you heard about Vibrant College and not like you're sold, you're all in, you're, you're all in. That's great, that's awesome. Our application process will happen soon. You'll see it happen uh, on our socials and you'll see a, a booth in our lobby about it and you can go hit it, go, go for it. That's awesome. But for some of you, you're going, man, that's not me, that's not my state of life, that's not where I'm at. Here's what you can do. If there's a leader around you that you're invested in, encourage them. If there's somebody that you know that, encourage them, that they might just be standing in the middle of their miracle. In Mark 6, the miracle of the loaves and fishes had just happened and they go out in the boat late at night and Jesus is walking in the water. Wow. Jesus gets in the boat and wind stops. But I read something interesting this week. They didn't understand what they were seeing. The disciples didn't understand what they were seeing so the disciples' hearts were hardened. They couldn't grasp what they were standing in the middle of. They were witnessing a miracle. It was a miracle, so it left them feeling lost. Church, let me, let me, let me help you with something. There's power when you realize you're standing in the middle of a miracle. Many of you in this house, your marriage has been saved because the Lord did an amazing work and the Lord healed you. You better realize you're standing in the middle of a miracle. When Jesus gets in your boat, he walks out on the water and he gets in your boat. You better realize that you're standing in the middle of a miracle. This church right here, if it was built on me, it would be nothing. But it's built on Jesus and his vision. It's built on a vibrant life in Jesus. That's what this thing is about. You better realize today we're standing in the middle of a miracle. And as a vision, I want to tell you that what we're going to do is we're going to plant seeds and we're going to develop leaders. And those leaders across the board, we're going to reach as many people we can with the hope and the love and the grace of Jesus because there are thousands, even millions in our city, in Houston area that need hope. They need life. They need to experience a fulfillment and a joy in life that they can't find anywhere else. You're not going to find it at your job. You're not going to find it at the club. You're not going to find it in a relationship. Only with Jesus are you going to find that fulfillment. And we've got to realize that we're standing in the middle of the miracle so we can get fully grasp it, fully grasp the gravity of it and get out. And let's go do what we're called to do. These next two weeks, I'm going to be preaching a, a two-week sermon series leading up to Easter about what we're called to do. And that's reaching people. Too many times we look at church evangelism, we think, man, that's great for the pastor to do. That's awesome. But I'm an engineer. No, we get it backwards. I'm here to be your encourager and team up with you. But we are called to evangelism. So what this next two weeks, I'm gonna be very practical. What is my vision for this next series, for this next season of our church? This next season, we're about to enter an incredible growth season where we're gonna reach as many people as we can for Jesus. We're going all out, we're pulling out all the stops. Why are we adding a second service? Look around. We're gonna create a lot of room because we're getting ready to reach a lot of people for Jesus. But it's, hey, here's, that's wonderful, that's wonderful, that's great. But it can't be just me or just our worship team, or just my wife. It's gotta be all of us. And I wanna empower you. I wanna train you because what God's about to do in your life, the miracle that God did in your life, he's going to use that to reach other people. If God saved your marriage, if God blessed your job, if God blessed your finances, if God saved your life, he's about to use that to, to reach other people, to change your situation, to change their situation. And I wanna tell you, if he's done it in your life, he'll do it in theirs. I've seen him do it in your life, he'll do it in theirs. I've seen him do it in my life. I've, hey, I see your hand back there, Ryan. I've seen him do it in my life. I know he can do it in somebody else's. And I'm believing for greater things than what we've ever seen right here in this church. I'm believing for it. 
If you're believing for greater things in your world, in your life, I want you to just lift your hands up and I want you to close your eyes and tell Jesus, say, say, I believe for it. God, I'm believing. I've seen you do it in my life and I'm believing you're going to work in it and through it and change people's situation. You're going to use me, Jesus. You're going to use me, Lord. You're going to use me, Jesus. Come on. Come on. I wish you would lift your voice up and begin to tell him, God, I believe you can do it again. You can do it again. You can do it again. You move the mountains and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way. And I believe I'll see you do it again. I'll see you move. Come on, sing that out. You move the for your life. That's all I want. I want God's best for your life. And I want to encourage you today. What God has for you is bigger than what you have for you. And a ship is safest when it's at its harbor. But it's not doing what it's made for until it goes out to sea. The ship is safest when it's tied and anchored. But it's accomplishing its purpose when it goes out to sea. I want to encourage you, this next season, God's going to use you to reach people. People that are far from God, people that are far than you ever thought away, people that you never thought would come, they're coming. Revival is here. Revival is coming in the name of Jesus. Revival is coming in the name of Jesus. Revival is coming in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you this week, walk with with fresh vision. Go before God and say, Lord, what do you want to do in me right now? I surrender to it. Whatever you say, I'll do. Wherever you say, I'll go. Whatever you say, I'm all in. I want to encourage you, after we dismiss today, go out to the lobby. We have children at one child. Please go. Go find a child that you connect with, and I want you to sponsor. Go do it. Let's get every child. Let's make it where Brandon doesn't walk away with any children. Let's go do that. And then also next, step two. Step two is directly through uh, those doors. I would encourage you, go to step two today, excited about seeing your gifts uncovered and see God's next step and God's best for your life. Have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Amen.